In the decade since Jim Henson's passing, his company, the Jim Henson Company, has produced three shows for PBS Kids. These shows were Sid the Science Kid, Dinosaur Train, and Splash and Bubbles. Are these shows anywhere near as good as Jim Henson's work? Well, no, but here are the shows. Sid the Science Kid follows the titular character of Sid as he learns more about the world around him. And for his age, he has quite a lot of burning questions and is somewhat smart. Bro's gonna surpass the average intelligence by the time he's eight. In each episode, he has a, like I mentioned, burning question about whatever. And honestly, I feel like any episode of Sid the Science Kid could end very quickly. I just gotta know, why are my shoes shrinking? shrinking. You got taller. Each episode of Sid the Science Kid follows a specific consistent format, as many kids' shows do. We start off with Sid with whatever big, important question he has. Also, it's funny just how little Sid sounds like a four-year-old, like, at all, at least I'm assuming he's around four. There are other instances of this, but with Sid, it's very significant. Like, he sounds like a grown man, straight up. It is then breakfast time, also known as... Breakfast time! Whatever Sid was talking about is discussed further in this segment. After that, we get this short but banger... Banger. I love my mom. Uh-huh. My mom is cool. Uh-huh. But now it's time... Having fun in school! Yeah! Top 10 rappers that Eminem was afraid to do. Next is a song where Sid looks for and finds his friends, which implies that Sid is always the last one to show up to school, but uh, let's just go with it. And even though we're just not supposed to question this stuff, obviously, some people certainly have. I don't remember where I initially saw this, whether it was Reddit or YouTube, so unfortunately I could not find it and I'll have to just explain what I remember. This theory, from what I remember, goes something along the lines of Sid's parents are rich and they fund the school, and that's why Sid controls what the school learns about every day. And that's why they do the I'm looking for my friend song whenever Sid shows up every day. To like, honor him or something. Now if you ask me, my theory is that it's a kids show, and this means nothing, but this isn't even a bad theory, actually. There's also this theory about Sid's school being a special ed school because there are only four students, and I'm pretty sure you can figure out that that was just... There was no way they were gonna animate, like, 20 characters in that school. I mean, have you seen how the show was made? After talking about whatever topic, we head to the Super Fab Lab and do some experiments. What's cool about the Super Fab Lab segments is that they show... Real people, just like you and me. Which shows that, as Sid says, You're a scientist, you can try this too. I am a scientist, I can try this too. Well, actually, I have been banned from using any science equipment ever since the incident, but we don't talk about that. After that is Good Laughter Noon. The most peak comedy of... Why do the ox like to breathe? I don't know. Why? Because he liked oxygen. Wow. That was like so funny. Teacher Susie then sings a song about whatever topic the episode is about. And Teacher Susie is probably like the most underrated artist of all time. I mean, she's over here literally composing and writing songs in like an hour probably. Next is the... Uh, Backseat driving with grandma car ride segments, where Sid's grandma always has the most insane stories about how this walrus ate the city or something. I don't actually remember. He arrives home from school and does a little rap about what he learned that day. <laughs> Scientist in the house! Yeah! Bro thinks he's the main character. After a bit of a conclusion as to what was learned that day, we cut to Sid in his room that night, talking about his super duper schmooper big idea, in which he comes up with theoretical inventions for the world. These are outlandish ideas, but he's four years old, so what do you expect? 
Some of his ideas, however, are low-key amazing. It would make the world a much better place. So, yeah, that's a design skid for you. I think this show does a good job at encouraging kids to learn more about science. And the way it does it through segments like the Super Fab Lab make it a bit exciting. And with the show being based around a child's perspective of the world, it makes it stand out as opposed to a real scientist hosting a show about science. If encouraging kids to be invested in science was their goal, then I think it's safe to say that Sid the Science Kid succeeded. But I'm just not satisfied yet. I need a show that really makes me sink. I need a show that makes me want to dive deeper into the world. And what better show to do this than a show about animals who went kaboom. Dinosaur Train follows a family of dinosaurs and the titular Dinosaur Train, which takes dinosaurs all around to various dinosaur places. And through the time tunnel, they can visit various dinosaurs from various time periods. I find it kind of odd how the dinosaurs are learning about their own species like this. Like, yeah, we as humans do that too. We learn about cavemen and stuff. But the way they're learning about dinosaurs kind of suggests that they themselves are not dinosaurs. And maybe that they even know something else. Like the Astro. I wonder if the pterodactyl family is, like, rich or something, considering how much they're going on the dinosaur train. And I can't imagine something like the dinosaur train where you're literally going back in time and visiting dinosaurs in person, or, or I guess in dinosaur. I can't imagine that would be very cheap. But then again, the pterodactyl family are not the only regulars that we see on the dinosaur train. So maybe the dinosaur train is just a regular thing that everyone goes on. Also, Mr. Conductor is totally evil and has malicious intent. Let's not kid ourselves. Dinosaur Train is a fun show dedicated to a species that, while known to most kids, definitely gives them a different perspective learning about these animals. I also like the usage of time travel in this show and how they use time travel to visit different species of dinosaurs and learn about them. Overall, 10 out of 10, I now know about dinosaur feces, which is definitely something I needed to know about. Also, did you know that George Washington didn't know that dinosaurs existed? Isn't that crazy? Splash and Bubbles follows various fish animals, including Splash and Bubbles, who live under the sea. And while dinosaur trains seem to focus more on the learning about species aspect, Splash and Bubbles does that, but it also focuses a lot on the morals, probably more than the learning about species stuff. This show was actually really pro-kindness, and I guess overall wholesomeness, at least the same song, like legit, the same song is kind of wholesome. The show is overall very moral-based, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Hashtag basic decency, have it. But they do, of course, teach about fish in the ocean. Primarily in the Get Your Feet Wet segments, which are shown in between stories. And I always like it when PBS Kids shows have IRL segments that relate to what we learn about in the show. Makes it a bit more in-depth, and it allows the show to explore the topic a bit further. Overall, I guess you could call Splash and Bubbles the Finding Nemo universe, but educational. I am absolutely not going to call it Finding Nemo, but educational, because that would be redundant. My general conclusion is that these shows explore education in fun ways and are all science-based. Sid the Science Kid is probably the worst one of all of these, but not gonna lie, it might be the most memorable. But the Muppets in Sesame Street are such masterpieces that none of these shows are even gonna come close. Of course, that's not a surprise, but even then, I can say that these shows are good in their own right and how they cover various parts of the world, or in Sid the Science Kid's case, how they cover the world. I am glad to say that we are now a few videos into this channel, or at least this era of the channel. I am looking forward to what's to come, and I hope you all are too. I will see you in the next video.